So let's talk about Alex Highsmith last year, a guy who many people watching this video perhaps have never heard of before. Uh, he didn't get a lot of attention last year, and it made sense. I mean, he wasn't a well-known player. He ended up with just 459 total snaps last year and was a third-round pick. I mean, 101 guys were selected in front of him, and he was playing behind Bud Dupree up until Bud Dupree's injury late in the season. However, he played pretty well, still got 12 pressures, and did a lot well, I think. So let's get into what he does well and why Pittsburgh let Bud Dupree walk and are seemingly going to let Alex Highsmith be their everyday starter starting next season. So we'll start off with a play like this. So on this play, what's going to happen is that he's going up one-on-one -on -one against a left tackle for Indianapolis, and watch what he's going to do here. Right when this play starts, notice how he's going to get to the outside like that. And watch, see how his left arm and how far over he's put that left arm. He's fine with using speed. He's fine with taking a little bit longer to get over because he knows once he gets through, he's fast enough to get over and make a play. And that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers clearly very much value in edge rushers. Obviously, TJ Watt is very explosive, but Dupree very explosive when he was there. It's probably why they drafted Highsmith. It's because they said, hey, this is the guy who is explosive, and it's good handwork at the line. He knows what he's good at, and so this way it can benefit him. And as you see, he's going to get there not quite in time to disrupt the play, but he does at least get a quarterback hit on Phillip Rivers, and again, the in theory, if it took Rivers a little bit longer to make that play, then that's how you get a sack, that's how you get forced fumbles, stuff like that. So that's what I look for, is can you beat a tackle, even if it's not necessarily ending up in a sack, you can't be too results-oriented. That was a good play from Alex Highsmith. When I'll go over to this one, this one was just like straight up awesome, and this was like an elite level play. This is probably my favorite play I saw from him last year. So what's going to happen is that you have a left tackle blocking him, but you also have a halfback who's going to go out and chip him. And obviously, Highsmith doesn't know this at the time because, you know, how would he? He's not in the huddle with the Colts. That would be weird if he was. So because of that, now he doesn't know that this is happening. And this is how you can sort of get, you know, completely taken out of a play. And watch how right when this play starts. So at this point, it looks like he's now just now realized, OK, there's going to be some sort of a chip here potentially. Because, I mean, how would you know if that was going to happen immediately and as of right now he spots this he wanted to get to the outside right that's what I talk about him and TJ Watt are both guys who they like to get to the outside that's what they do that's where they live and especially with a tradition you know a typical 3-4 defense that's kind of all you have to do is get to the outside because there's you know several guys to the inside that can take care of that stuff but watch him pull off a spin move and he again gets the quarterback hit on Philip Rivers that throw was high who knows maybe he had an impact on that one and was the reason why that big play didn't happen uh really good job by Highsmith I think to be able to just you know do that spin move get over and still be able to get into the play to some degree get another quarterback hit spin moves are tough spin moves are brutal you know everyone says spin move probably the most difficult move to pull off and it's also probably the most difficult move to block if someone does pull it off so if he can do that consistently there's some benefit there and also he's great in the running game that's a key factor because again I noticed the sacks aren't anything crazy he has two sacks and you know again limited playing time but still that's below average sack totals although I would argue just looking at sack totals can be a bit bit misleading there is some volatility there but also if you're good in the running game I mean analytics some analytics suggest that that's actually more valuable than being good rushing the passer so the fact that he can do both is key, and this is an example. He's going up one-on-one -on -one against a tight end, which is a favorable situation, but it's also a situation he might get from time to time. I mean, with this vaunted Pittsburgh Steelers front seven, you're going to have to put a tight end on somebody. You're not going to send out seven offensive linemen. So sometimes you might try to put that on Highsmith, who can take advantage. And watch him sort of pull off this pull move, which is sort of, you know, getting his left arm over and, you know, pulling along with sort of off to the side, gets over, helps able to, is able to make a tackle pretty quickly. That's a good strength there, good hands. That's probably, probably the main thing I've noticed about him is he has really good hands, which that's something that it's always valuable. Offensive linemen and defensive linemen always talk about how important hands are. If you can get your hands where you want them, you're going to have a lot more success than if you can't. 
no matter how physically gifted you are. And again, you have something like this. This goes back to the explosiveness a little bit on this play, which, you know, all of these things work together. You can't just get by in the NFL having one good trait. You can do that in college. In the NFL, you have to have multiple good traits, but here's multiple good traits. So you see, that's where he is on the field. And right when this play starts, you notice how he kind of steps in and at this point, the run is clearly going to Indianapolis' is right, but the back is going to try to cut back a little bit. This is all intentional. This is what they're trying to do, and the back usually makes his read from his right to left, which would be our left to right, and eventually you try to get to sort of Highsmith's left if you have to. That's sort of the last place you would go, but Highsmith doing a good job of running in and putting himself in position where if this is a run in his direction, he can run over and make the tackle. And again, watch him sort of just this quick burst, and he does help run over and make that tackle. So, very good play. Uh, he seems to be a good player. I mean, this was just a rookie season, and a lot of edge rushers take a year to develop. So, the fact that he played pretty well as a rookie, I fully expect him to continue to blossom and develop. I think he can absolutely do that. I think it's cool that he can stop the run. I probably would say he's a better pass rusher than run uh, stopper, but I think he's good at both. And again, don't let the uh, lack of sacks fool you. That's also something you see a lot of from rookie edge rushers is they might get a lot more pressures than actual sacks, and then they sort of learn how to turn those pressures into sacks as they get older, which I expect to be the case with Highsmith. So yeah, uh, I think he's a good player. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Alex Highsmith as a player? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.